He's working on it. All right, I think I'm good. All right, well, good morning, everybody, and uh, what an honor it is to be here. I am John Moore. I'm the Director for Philanthropy and Engagement for the United Way of Delaware and a proud ambassador for the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce. You hear that, Heather? That's right. And so um, I'm, I'm just delighted that I I'm hear you. I love it. <laughs> you know what? You know? <laughs> and I, I want to thank Judy, Diogo, and her team for allowing me to have the opportunity to be a part of this real help in real time presentation. And it gave me a few moments to speak on the subject of your positive attitude can propel your altitude above this challenge. And so all of us know we are really dealing with some unbelievable challenging moments. We are bombarded by the news that's telling us all these things about all the diagnosis and all the people losing their lives. And you know, some of this stuff can really cause some problems. It can cause some post-traumatic uh, distress um, symptoms, it can cause depression, it can cause confusion and anger. But in the midst of all this darkness, there is still some encouraging moments that we could be grateful for. And I'll, I'll say this, that every day we're able to live, to be alive, that in itself is a positive thing. And every time that we live another day, that's just another moment of being closer to the end of this pandemic. And so it, it gives us a sense of hope. And that's what I want to spend the next few minutes really encouraging people by giving them the hope that they need in order to make it through these challenging times. You know, I use this affirmation and I often quote it to myself and it says this, it says, our lives are not determined by what happens to us, but by how we react to what happens, not by what life brings to us, but by the attitude we bring to life. For a positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It's a catalyst and a spark that creates extraordinary results. And I truly believe that, that if we uh, have this mindset, if you were to um, come and visit me down at the Sindel building on Lockerman Street, given my address, 101 West Lockerman Street, and come into the Sindel building, you come in my office, and I got this picture that hangs there, and I bet a lot of you have seen this picture before. And it's a picture of a little kitten looking in the mirror and what the kitten sees is the king of the jungle. So he sees that mighty lion. And even though that little kitten may think it can open its mouth and roar, I'm sure it'll just be like a little kitten and just meow. But the title of it is, what matters is how you see yourself. And you know, every day when we wake up and we go into our bathrooms and so forth, we look in the mirror, you know, that's a question that I could ask everybody. Um, what is it that you see in that reflection of yourself. So you know, I, I say this all the time to many of the audiences I speak to. When I, I wake up in the morning, I'm already charged up and I look in the mirror, I say things like, good God almighty, look at that handsome brother right there <laughs> who's about to go out and make a positive impact on the world. And you know, I don't know if that's everybody, but you know, I could do just the opposite. I could walk in the mirror and I could look in there and say, hey, John Moore, you just aren't as, as young as you used to be. You're just not as slim as you used to be. Uh, you don't have as much energy. You got aches and pains in some of the parts of your body. But let me tell you something. I choose every day to be positive instead of negative. And so I speak those things to myself. So I think and I focus on the things in my life that are really awesome. Even in this time of isolation, I think about my wonderful wife. I think about my handsome sons. I think about all the good friends that I have, the wonderful colleagues that I have at the United Way of Delaware. And I think about all the opportunities I have to be able to make a difference. And all those things drive me to be able to have a great day, to have this positive attitude. And, and, and in this isolation, I am constantly doing three things that the late great coach Jimmy Valvano, or Jimmy V, once said in his talk at the ESPY Awards before he departed from life. He said, if we can do these three things every day, if we could think, if we could cry, and if we can laugh, think, laugh, and cry, he said, that makes one heck of a day. And I've had the opportunity to do that, to really think, to really laugh about some things, and to even look at the circumstances and bring me to tears. But I know that that caused me to have a greater appreciation for what it is. So you know, as we get going in our day, as we're working remotely, as we're donning these masks, as we're practicing social distancing, 
And as we're attending Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, still trying to figure this stuff out, we need to be safe and we need to be healthy physically, mentally, and emotionally. And, it's, and, and also we need to be set spiritually. So, you know, what I want to do is just take a few moments to give you some ideas of what it is that I have that drives my positive attitude. And it's from two, really two perspectives. The one is the self-care. Because I'm a, I can tell everybody that's listening to this right now, you can want to help all the people that you can. But if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not loving yourself, then it's very difficult for you to do that. But then the other part of that is to take the time out to be service to other people, provide service to other people. So let me give you a few things in regards to this self-care, in regards to a uh, positive attitude during isolation, some of the things you can do. And first and foremost, my day starts off with prayer and meditation. Now, I'm not speaking from a religi religiosity standpoint totally. I'm just saying that you take the time to pray to the creator that you believe in, to find that peace of mind and that guidance that helps you to believe in who you are and to actually be so optimistic because you know that God is going to help you through any circumstance. And then with the meditation piece is that it actually gives you that time to think, to really clear your head, to not let all the negative things begin to outweigh the positive things that are in there. And meditation is a great way to do that. Then here's another thing. Turn off all that bad press. You know, my son sees me when he, he goes out and he comes back in. The first thing I was doing when this pandemic started was I was giving them data all the time. Look, you need to stay in the house, man, because this many people got diagnosed today. This people, people uh, passed away. And, and then you turn on CNN and you turn on everything else. And that's all you're bombarded with. It's all it. I'm saying to you, turn off that bad news. Just let it go sometimes. I mean, we got to stay informed, but, you know, it could be social media. It could be emails consuming the excessive content of what it's thinking. And all it's doing is adding to the fear, the stress, and the anxiety that could actually take over us. And there's a fine line between staying informed and then giving in to the uncertainties of what we're dealing with. Yes, we need to be informed. and We need, to be, we need not be superficial. This is a reality that we're dealing with. But it's no need to constantly be there because of all the great things that are happening now. I'm telling you, sometimes I love watching the news because I see some of the great things that people are doing to help those who are really challenged. And then here's another one. You know, since I've been home like this, to get me geared up, don't take a whole lot for me to get geared up anyway, but I love listening to good music. Turn on a good song. You know, I, listen, I like personally listening to them old R&B songs when I was much younger, or you might listen to some good jazz, or, or, or you, could, you could maybe get into gospel or country music, whatever it may be. You know, you listen to different types of music and, and, and let, it, let it be a variety. So some of the music you might listen to could cause you to just jump up out your seat and start dancing. You know, I don't, nobody got to be in a room with you. You just start dancing. Then there are other songs that you may listen to. It just causes you to just think, you know, about how precious life is and how wonderful life is. And then you listen to other songs that can cause you to just be uplifted in your spirit. Now, I don't know about anybody on this Zoom meeting right now. But the particular songs that I'm really getting into and I asked it about this morning was from one of our own Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce members, Dina Vendetti. I don't know if anybody's listening, but on a daily basis, Dina's on there getting on that piano, saying a positive message. I'm kind of like getting dependent on that now. I'm like, yo, Dina, where's my song at for today? And I get so charged up and overjoyed when she ends every one of her messages by just looking in the camera and saying, be well. And that just gets me fired up. So, you know, those types of things help. Another thing, and I'm needing to do this because, you know, you work so hard, you're traveling. Typically, I got to commute an hour every day up to Wilmington. Exercise, you know, exercise at home. You might not be able to get to the gym, but find new exercise routines that you can do to make some fun out of it. And, you know, you can turn on one of them YouTube videos and try to do some of the steps of what those guys are doing there. Or you can just like my wife did this morning, as I was calling for her, she just went out to take her daily walk. Or maybe some of us run. It's very refreshing and it's nothing like getting your body charged up, the blood flowing and feeling good about the exercise that you've just participated in and getting ready to get your day started. You know, you can think if you want to check in on Facebook, I like to give plug outs, pop, um, 
and, and, and advertisements for some of our members of the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce. You can ask me on Facebook. You can actually go out there and see Evans Arm and Trading of CUN Fit and see the kinds of things of what he's doing. So it's, it's awesome that we can get physically involved. Now, at the same time, many of us are here and we're working. So the other thing that we can do is make sure that we are laser focused on the tasks that need to be achieved with our job. And that could be, you know, making sure that things are done correctly, being prepared for your meetings, and making sure that everything is done with just as much excellence as if you were sitting in your office on a regular basis. And along with that is making sure that your personal spaces are taken care of. So, you know, you want to make sure that your area is clean, you know, get rid of all the clutter, uh, make sure that your area is all professional. If you jump on these Zoom meetings, you want to have a great appearance with it and so forth. So all those things are critical in being able to make you have that positive attitude in the things that we do every day. And, you know, another thing that's, that's happening with me is also the opportunity to catch up with some reading. So like I said earlier, you know, I turn off that bad press and I'll just don't want to listen to all those things. I can go out and grab a great book and it can help me to really put my mind into some places where, and, you know, I would normally not be if I was watching the news. I, I just recently watched uh, the movie uh, Just Mercy with my wife the other day and it caused me to pick up the book and say, okay, I need to revisit this book because it was such a powerful story about a local Delawarean who did tremendous things. And so, you know, reading about the story of Brian Stevenson and all of the things that he achieved, it really brought that movie full circle to the power of what it was all about. And then the final thing, and all these things that I'm listing, they don't have to be in any particular order, is that the last thing you do is make sure that you just take care of yourself. Just do you. And what I mean by that, and I see, I, I mean this with the fullest of sincerity, take time to really take care of yourself. Like I said, you get in that mirror and you look at yourself, make sure that you really love the person that you see because you're taking care of them. Have a greater appreciation for who you are because it's making a, it's this, this time of being away from everything is really a chance to just sit back and think and appreciate the things that you're doing, the things that you're achieving. All those things are important in regards to self-care and to be able to take care of yourself. So like I said, those, those things are very important, but here's the second part to that. You know, in the work that I do for the United Way of Delaware, it's always about reaching out, helping those who have greater needs. You know, our vision is this, to um, advance the common good by creating opportunities for all Delawareans. And so that means in this time and need, we need to take care of people. It's most urgent for others that we have the opportunity, even in this time of isolation, to do volunteerism and to be able to do some outreach. So let me explain a little bit about that. One, when we start talking about outreach, is that we can go out there and volunteer. I want to put in a plug right now for my organization, the United Way of Delaware. And with the United Way of Delaware, we have a place you can go on our website, www.uwde.org, and then you go forward slash volunteer. And there we have a site called You Volunteer, U V O L U N T E E R, You Volunteer. And you can take the opportunity to actually go there and you can actually sign up for a volunteer opportunity. You can create your own personal volunteer profile at that website. And so by being able to do that, you can go out and you can see some of the things that you really want to get involved in. Choose some of the agencies that you really have a passion for. Let the United Way know of some of the activities you'd like to be involved in. It can be from uh, going out to a mobile food pantry. As we've seen at Dover Downs the other day, hundreds of people, I think 2,500 people, in line in need of food 
or you can get involved with some virtual reading to children who are at home now to be able to uplift their spirits. You know, the other day, uh, to really bring this volunteer piece home, uh, we had the opportunity as United Way in partnership with one of the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce's uh, member organizations to do something tremendous that impacted all three counties in this state. There was a need for some supplies for people of need in many of those communities. And so we were able to get pallets, not, not little donations, we were able to get pallets of toilet paper, paper towels, diapers, baby wipes, uh, gloves, masks. We even got a 55 gallon drum of hand sanitizer. And what we were able to do is meet with three different organizations who were going back in all three counties to disperse those things to those persons that were in need. It was amazing because as they showed up, you know, sometimes you say, hey, look, we got some things that can help out uh, in your communities. And they showed up in vehicles that, that were nowhere big enough to be able to take the donations that we had received. And it was so awesome that as they came back and packed up their vehicles and took those things out to where they needed to go, just the joy that was on their faces. But I'll tell you on my part, the joy was being able to be a part of a volunteer opportunity to turn someone's dark today into a brighter tomorrow. So, I mean, I'm telling you in this time of isolation, these are the types of things that we can do in order to really make a difference in our own lives, to feel good about who we are, and then to be able to reach out to those whose needs are greatest to be able to help. You know, that's one of the reasons why I love being a part of the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce ambassador team, because we're all coming together doing tremendous things from a business standpoint, but we all care. And, and, and that leads me to this last point. One of the other things that we can do is that we can do outreach. You know, um, that, there, there are people that we haven't talked to in a while, uh, our clients, our friends, and one of the things that we can stop and do, and I've had the opportunity to do this with hundreds of people in the last few weeks, is actually just either send an email or send a text that would ask you know, both friends and colleagues and clients, how are you? Are you healthy? Are you safe? How's your family? How are you dealing with these situations? Big question. Is there anything that you have need of that I could help with? And it's even greater beyond the emails and the text is to even make a phone call. Yesterday, I got a phone call from a dear friend, uh, former mayor of Dover, Carlton Carey. And he just called me up to say, hey, John, how are you doing? How's your family? And I got the opportunity to ask him the same. After that conversation was over with, we both felt very good of knowing that both our families were healthy, everybody was safe and that we really care for one another. You know, this is part of the responsibility we have. You know, I remember a great quote from the late boxer, Muhammad Ali, who said, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. And then again, another quote from my great hero, Dr. Martin Luther King, he once said that our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. For human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of human prosperity, it requires suffering, sacrifice, and struggle. It is the tireless exertions and compassionate concerns of dedicated individuals like you and I. Because a person has not started to live until he or she can rise above the narrow confines of their own individualistic concerns to the broader concern for all humanity. For everybody on the Zoom meeting, I just want you to know we are our brother's keeper. And in these challenging times, the way to have this positive attitude that will cause you to propel an, to an altitude above these challenges is to take care of yourself. And even more importantly, to take care of other people. So I was delighted just to be able to have a few moments with you this morning to be able to be a part of this real help in real time and to talk about this subject. And I hope that some of the words that I share will, will allow you to just get up in the morning, realize how fortunate and blessed you are to have another day on this earth to be able to make a positive impact in the lives of someone. And I truly guarantee you that as you make impact in the lives of others, you make an impact in your own life. 
and it causes you to smile, even in these challenging times. So continue to love yourself. Wake up in the morning, fire it up. Let's get going. Let's see what we can do to, to improve our own lives and to improve the lives of those within our community. So again, thank you, Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce, for the opportunity to speak. I hope all of this worked because I've just been looking at a still picture of myself for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm hoping you're still getting this message. I was kind of concerned there. I was like looking at this. Place. <laughs> guess what? I, Dina, I was going to keep on talking. Oh, this is such an important thing. Dina, I want you to know, face to face, I got you on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you Sid, for those songs in the morning. And for everybody that's listening, God bless you and continue to do great things. I don't know if anybody had any questions or anything. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. And yes, we heard the whole thing, even though um, we're looking, we were looking at a still picture. Uh oh, and now he went away. <laughs> I don't think it's something we said, you know, but <laughs> no. anybody Technic got a comment? Technical diff difficulties. I think, I think. That was a great message. And I think one of the things too that, you know, we've been talking about here at the chamber is that there are so many things that we're going to learn when we come out on the other side of this, you know, um, and that's not to discount how scary and how terrible the virus is because it is and, uh, and it's hard for people, but there are going to be things that we learn about doing business in a time like this that are going to propel us into the next days, you know, and we're seeing so many um, wonderful things. People are being so creative and they're doing so many things to help others. And, you know, would they have done that anyway? Maybe, but we don't know that for sure. But the truth of the matter is in the middle of all this, they're doing it now. Yeah. And yeah. maybe we're going to learn some things about what it really means to live like a community. This is, this is the epitome of community, you know? So. Absolutely. Any other questions for John or anything, anybody want to pipe in and say something? I, I just lost you. John, that was incredible. I feel like I could go like just take on the world now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. That's right. Yeah, I was gonna say thank you, John. It's Lisa. Um, I, I have a question for you. Yep. Um, and, and you're very inspiring, and I really appreciate you being here today. And um, I like all the things you said about volunteering and and having our communities do more. Are there any virtual events that United Way is thinking about doing or doing or any any of the partners here that, I mean, we're thrown into this virtual world and, and I think yeah. sometimes it can work. So are you doing anything or planning anything? Yeah, I, I may not know all the specifics. I know right now, virtually, we're doing a lot of reading to the children at home through our Reading Angels program. So you can actually go, I'm telling you, it's a great opportunity. It's, if you were to just go to that, uwde.org slash forward slash volunteer uh it will take you to our you volunteer portal where you can create your own volunteer profile and then right there lisa you can say okay i want to be able to get involved in some virtual volunteerism can you give me some of the uh types of activities that will be taking place and they'll actually be able to generate those types of responses for you and then uh you also have a chance to, to uh, say okay well, these are some of my favorite agencies that I like to work with. So say for instance, there may be some sort of virtual mentoring program through First Day Community Action Agency. And because you signed up that way, you'll get a notification to give you an opportunity to participate. Love it, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Uh, for you, the rest of you guys too, um, you know, we're continuing our Real Help in Real Time series. And next week we've got Alan Kovitz talking about recovery planning on Tuesday and how to get back to business. Um, and then on Thursday, we're gonna get a medical update from uh, one of the workers at Bay Health, which will also be a very interesting thing. And my goodness, haven't they been heroes, you know? Yes. Um, and we're doing, uh, next week, we're doing something new and different, although everything we're doing right now is new and different for the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce, I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> but we're doing a virtual mixer. And so um, each, chamber each chamber staff member is going to be facilitating a conversation uh, in different industries. So we're, we're dividing the group up, large employer, small employer, education. Each of those has, um, I think hospitality is one, nonprofits. Each has a different meeting ID number and you can uh, register for that and we'll give you the ID. And it just gives us all a chance to talk with each other about what's happening and what our plans are mm -hmm. and how we can help each other. So tune in on that. That's Wednesday, the 29th from five. It's just a half hour, five to 5.30. Um, 
And if it goes on a little longer than that, that's that's okay too, you know, but uh, be aware of those kinds of opportunities coming your way. We're trying to pump out all kinds of information every single day and uh, we're trying to, you know, send it out in a way that's not quite so overwhelming. I mean, it's kind of a barrage mm -hmm. of stuff, but um, stay tuned. And if there, are thing, if there are things that we can do to help you, please know that even though our office is closed and, you know, for the most part, people are working remotely, um, that we're still here for you to be able to do that, so. Very good. I quickly wanted to add, um, Dina, for the mixer. So that uh, virtual mixer that we're doing, I mean, even though it's virtual, so it's very different, it's not face-to-face, -face, it is still open to the public. So if you guys, you know, if you know anybody that's not a member of the chamber, they're still welcome um, because it is good to be able to see each other and to, you know, chat about you know, things that are happening right now. So that is open to the public and you can find those Zoom codes, like Dina said, on the flyer. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you everybody for hopping on here today and for being part of this. And uh, we hope to see you again on another Real Help in Real Time. John, thank you so much for your message. Um, as always, you know, giving us something to think about for the rest of this day and the days to come. And uh, know that we're thinking about you and the work that you're doing too. Thanks everybody. It was All a right. blast. All right. Stay positive and stay safe. You too. Yeah, thank you, John. The next time we want to see your real face, okay? <laughs> I want to know how she does that. <laughs>